Hello, hello. You should be able to hear me now. We should be live. We're going to wait for a couple more seconds for everyone to join. And then we can start. Uh, yeah, I'll see that people are already joining the stream. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, hit quickly GM in the chat, please, 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 uh, if you can hear me. This is just a double check for me uh, that to know that uh, that you can hear me. Just click the GM or something. And then we are going to wait for a couple of more minutes before the actual start of this workshop. Cool. GM to you guys as well. Hello from India. Hi, India. GM. Cool, a lot of people. Okay, you can hear me. I think we can start. We are right on time for others that are wanting to join. They, they can follow up during this uh, intro presentation, which will be really short. So yeah, Ola from Bogota, I'm currently at DevCon. So I'm really sorry if there will be some unlikely, slightly connection, connect, internet connection problem. For the ones who list the DevCon, uh, they're familiar with some issues that we had during this week, but I hope everything gonna, gonna be, gonna, gonna went smoothly. Uh, okay, so this workshop is titled Intro to Hard Hat. And it's going to be one hour workshop. So we are going to try to, uh, let me go to the slides. So intro to Harhat. We're going to try to explain what Harhat is, uh, how you can uh, write your smart contracts in it, how you can write some tests, how you can deploy smart contracts. And um, yeah, it's going to be a one hour long tutorial session. So you can go along with me or watch lately. I'll try to keep pace at a reasonable level so you can follow follow along uh, and also like uh, I'll try to uh, make uh, tiny breaks so you can ask something in if there's some some questions or issues so this is me my name is Andre Rakic I'm a developer advocate for Jamie Radical at Jamie Labs you can follow me on Twitter or on Lance so these these are my uh, my social handles Andre underscore dev on Twitter and Andre.Lance uh, on uh, Lance Protocol. I'll post my Twitter handle here because uh, during the last uh, workshop, which Harry held, there were some questions about VRF boilerplate uh, projects and I post another tweet to be on the top of my, on my profile so you can find some examples there as well. Uh, okay, so... Our agenda for today is to create a simple hardhead project in TypeScript. So you can uh, write hardhead either in JavaScript or TypeScript. So contracts and solidity, of course, and then tests is and tests and scripts either in JavaScript or TypeScript. My suggestion to you is to use TypeScript, which because of because the language is statically typed uh, and it's more secure. Then we are going to write unit tests using TypeScripts, obviously. Uh, and finally, I'll showcase to you a uh, chaining starter kit, chaining hardhead starter kit, which is a boilerplate uh, repo for uh, using uh, chaining products uh, in inside the starter, inside the hardhead. Uh, and that's it for the slides. <laughs> okay, so I'm uh, now gonna stop share uh, this screen, uh, and I'm gonna try to present my terminal. Uh, I have, okay, there's a question. What is a hardhat? Hardhat is a smart contract development framework. Uh, it is used for compiling, building, testing, and deploying smart contracts using either JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, hello to you, my friend. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I want to uh, present my terminal really quickly. Give me a sec. Uh, yeah, you should be able to see my terminal now. So I'm currently on the desktop. What I want to do now is to create a new folder. So you can create a new folder by typing or directory. Uh, and we can call it uh, Chainlink 
uh, we can call it workshop, let's say hard hat workshop. You can call it whatever you want, basically. And I'm going to CD to that folder. And I now want to open my uh, terminal with you, uh, my ID with you. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever you want. This is a simple shortcut to open Visual Studio Code from terminal. So if you wasn't familiar with it, just type code and dot means that open Visual Studio Code inside this folder. Also, you can just open it, uh, you know, go to folders and that's it. Okay, I'm now gonna, yeah, stop presenting my screen more and more time. Uh, yeah, is hardhead same as truffle? Pretty much the same. Uh, so in, inside the truffle, you can also like write tests inside uh, using JavaScript or TypeScript. Hardhead is pretty much the, the, is the same idea, but uh, you know, uh, it kind of works differently. We'll see uh, how. Should we code along with you? Yes, if you have time or are willing to do, you can follow, you can code along with me. I'll try to keep pace at a reasonable level. Uh, give me one more second to uh, now present the Visual Studio code I just opened. Okay, so you should be able to see my uh, Visual Studio code. So uh, I, I'll try to zoom it a bit. So what I want to do here is to open my integrated terminal. Let's zoom this a bit. And I, I'll try to create a new hardhead project. To do that, type npx hardhead in it. That's it, npx hardhead in it. Before that, uh, you should maybe want to check your node version first. So you can do that something like this. So this is your node version. This is your NPM version. Just double check. And then if you have all of that installed, you can type npx or hat in it. If you don't, go, you can Google it on, inside. Uh, you can Google for node or npm installment and uh, just follow the step. It's pretty simple for your machine. Okay, I'm going to hide this. Uh, sorry, yeah. get started and hit enter. Okay, so we're now uh, gonna wait for a new project to be created. Uh, what you can see here is that uh, there's like an integrated thermal selection. So I can select either JavaScript project or TypeScript project or an empty config file or to quit. Uh, I want to create a TypeScript project. So I'm gonna uh, navigate to the TypeScript project, hit enter. Uh, Hardcode project root can be the same as my folder, so just enter, git ignore, yes, enter, and install hardhead toolbox, yes. And now uh, the it, it's going to install all of the necessary dependencies before we continue with the next steps. Uh, if, you have, if you used hardhead in the past, uh, you may notice that earlier we used to install hardhead eaters, hardhead eater scan, hardhead type chain, all of these uh, uh, handy plugins. Uh, recently, Hardhead migrated to, the, to this Hardhead dash toolbox, which is a faster environment and also combines all of these uh, all of these uh, all of these plugins that I mentioned. So now uh, you can just install Hardhead toolbox and you're ready to go. If you're using Node npm or Node npm version uh, above seven, if you're using npm six or yarn, then you still need to install. Those dependencies, but it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Everything is in on, in, on their documentation on the screen number one, so there should no no be problems there. While we're waiting now to this to be installed, I can um, guide you through the through the project. So there is like this is contracts folder. So inside this folder, all of the Solidity files or all of our smart contracts will go. There is like a default one, which is lock.sol. We're going to create our new one. But basically, if you want to create a new contract, you'll create a Solidity file and put it inside this folder. Scripts is a folder where all of the TypeScript or JavaScript uh, scripts are located. So uh, it, in my, for my use case for this boilerplate project, there's also there's only one script and it's like a deployment script. So by uh, running this deployment script, we are gonna create, uh, we are gonna deploy our smart contract to the actual blockchain. It can be a local hardhead block, blockchain or some test or main net. 
And finally, we have test folder where all of our test, test files, also in TypeScript, will be located. So we're gonna write some tests during this tests during this workshop. So we are gonna create a new uh, TypeScript file inside the test folder. Finally, there is a really important file, which is this config file. And uh, for the moment, we uh, it's here is specified only the Solidity version. This is the latest one. And uh, we imported hardhead-toolbox package for now. You can expand this and you will probably expand this config file a lot with different networks, networks, um, also other, other plugins as well, but uh, it's, uh, it's okay for the start to, to, to just have a Solidity version specified. I'm gonna qu quickly go to StreamYard one more time to see if there's like a, there's some uh, new questions. There aren't. Awesome. We can continue with the development or start with the development and continue with the workshop. So the first thing that we want to do is to check that everything is installed correctly. So I'll try to compile this default smart contract. So I'll do that by type npx uh, hard hat compile, and it should compile this smart contract. And it is. Uh, so some new folders are generated. Cache is not so important to you. Cache is basically uh, a way for Hardhead to know that, uh, to speed it, uh, to speed uh, Hardhead. Basically, if I want to compile this contract one more time, uh, because of the uh, content inside the cache folder, it's not gonna recompile the whole contract uh, once again, because I haven't made any, any change. Uh, same things apply to tests. So this cache is basically a way to speed up our development. Artifacts are important to you because artifacts uh, contains all of the build uh, outputs. And you know there's a build info, there's a giant JSON file that I won't bother you uh, a lot. And there, if you go to, to contracts, you can file for find uh, build artifact for this lock uh, contract. Uh, it's AVI, it's bytecode and all of the other stuff which can be useful for front-end development later. Uh, finally, you can see this type chain dash types folder. Type chain ty types is basically a collection of TypeScript types. So type chain is a really hand handy tool which automatically generates TypeScript types out of the Solidity, uh, uh, out of the Solidity uh, file or Solidity uh, built-in types. And it's really cool uh, uh, because uh, we can uh, write our front end and our tests in TypeScript more safely. Uh, if you want to also uh, um, develop uh, inside the Visual Studio Code using Hardhead, you can go to extensions, search for Solidity. And uh, this extension is the official uh, Hardhead extension. So this is Hardhead for Visual Studio Code. And it's really handy if I'm using uh, this extension. If you go here, I'm now gonna, yeah, move this a bit, uh, select this Solidity file. You can see we have a nice linter, uh, also like we on save, it's gonna format contract for us as well, which is always cool and stuff like that. So I highly recommend uh, you to, to try this extension. Finally, I will just try to run some tests. So MPX hardhat test to see that everything is deployed correctly and installed correctly, and it is. So we can start with the development now. I'm gonna quickly go to StreamYard to see, uh, to see how to, yeah. So uh, if won't be a problem if you do with JavaScript, right? Yeah, so no problem. Uh, if when you do npx hardhead in it, just select a JavaScript project instead of, instead of TypeScript project, and that's it. Uh, show how to connect uh, MetaMask and TestNet. I'll show that uh, later. But basically, you can, uh, inside the MetaMask, there was like predefined TestNets as well. Uh, try to uh, find show TestNets in your in your MetaMask settings, and those should be there. But yeah, I'll show you later. OK, uh, so we, we want to create a new we do the contracts folder and here I can, and I can call it simple. I'll 
put this here, put this down. I hope you can uh, see see my screen. So the first thing is that we want to uh, specify this version of a Solidity compiler. So inside the hardhead config file, you saw that we are using this version of the Solidity, uh, 0 0.8.17. So uh, I will specify my version like this, so pragma Solidity, and I'll type 0 0.8.0. This means that all of the version from 0, 0.0 are valid. So 0 0.0, 0 0.8, point, sorry, 0 0.8.0, 0, 0.8.1, 8 8.2, etc. All, all of the way to the latest one, which is 8.17, okay? If I specify my version like this, this means that only 0 0.8.4 version is, is active. And you can see how we have this red, line by the plugin, which tell us source file required different compiler version, current compiler version is 0 0.8.17, and you're using 0 0.8.4. So I'm gonna quickly switch to, uh, to this one. Also, I can type some, something like this, so I can specify multiple Solidity versions. So it can be uh, 0 0.7.0 uh, and then greater than something like this. This is also a valid syntax. So this is from 7.0 all the way down to, to this version. So a whole, whole range of versions. I hope this is clear to you guys. Okay, so uh, our contract is defined like this. So keyword contract and then the name, we name it simple storage. This is the this is smart contract, so it doesn't have any body in it, but it's a valid smart contract. You can see here this uh, yellow uh, line provided by the plugin. So if you're using uh, Solidity versions greater than uh, 8.0, you need to provide um, a license identifier. So this comment basically tells that you need to provide SPDX license identifier. I can type it manually or I can click quick fix and choose, for example, MIT. And now the error is gone. I will try to now compile this. NPX hardhat compile, nothing should happen actually. But inside the build for folder here, we should have now simple storage.sol as well. Okay, quickly go back to the uh, YouTube to see is are there no 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 further questions. Awesome. So we can start with something like that. So we can create um, we can create a variable called uh, message. Uh, you know, like a simple hello world uh, hello world uh, example. String is a type, and we need to set up the visibility type. So it can be private. It can be internal. It can be uh, external and it can be public. I'll set up as private. So private means that only my contract can access this variable. Uh, it's not hidden on the blockchain. Okay, so this is really important. So there's like a general misconception that if you, let's put it like this, sorry guys. Yeah, so if you specify private keyword, this means that only your contract can access that variable. It doesn't mean it's hidden on the blockchain. So there's like a general misconception about that. So private is not like hidden. Everything is public still. So because uh, we create this private message, we'll need to create some getter function uh, during the way. But first, let's start with the constructor now. So if you're coming from C or C++ world, uh, you know that the constructor is basically uh, a function that is gonna be executed only once during the creation of a smart contract. So inside the constructor, uh, we can set up some uh, default values and we cannot call constructor anymore. So what we can do here is that we can set the message to, let's say, Chainlink Workshop. 
And now our message is chaining workshop. Okay, so this is gonna be set up upon creation of a smart contract and that's it. Because I said that the message is a private value, what I can do now is I can create a getter function. So function is a keyword, then the name, we can name it like get message. Now the visibility modifier, I can, I will say it's public because public means that anyone can call this function and we want anyone to, to allow anyone to call it and also view. So if there's nothing, uh, that means that this function modifies the states. If there's a keyword payable, this means that this function also requires some, some ether or some other native coin to be, uh, to be spent. If it's view, that means that it only reads state from the blockchain and the view is free to consume. No guess required. And also pure means that uh, pure is a function which do some computation but doesn't touch storage variables. So pure can be like one plus, plus two equals three, something like that. So if you need some kind of computation there, so view, and we need to specify the return type with returns. So we are returning string. And because string is, um, is not a basic type, uh, we need to specify the, the memory. So it's gonna be memory, uh, storage, or call data. Don't bother with this yet. You can just specify its memory and that's it. So our function just need to return message. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna quickly compile this contract one more time. There shouldn't be errors, there's not, and that's it. So we have a function, we have a contract that sets the message function to change the workshop. And also we can read that, that message. And you know, this is, uh, this is it. Um, okay, there's some, uh, some questions, sorry. Uh, you should go along. I still going to get smart contracts, basically. Yeah, okay. Thanks, thanks, guys, for for answering in the chat while I were uh, while I were inside the Visual Studio Code. Okay, so I think now we can start with our writing with our first test. So what we can do now is that we can create a new test file, or we can use this one. So let's make. Okay, I'm gonna delete this default smart contract and I'm gonna delete all of this stuff to speed us up a bit. So I'm gonna delete, no, I can comment this for a bit. I'm gonna delete all of this as well and all of this as well. And we have an empty body, okay? So we're gonna start with the described block so inside here, we can say something like simple storage unit tests, and uh, we should deploy fixtures. So I'm gonna talk about fixtures now. So fixtures are basically a way to speed up uh, the execution of your tests and to save us time and resources. So, uh, so basically, if we define a fixture, we can reuse the same setup in every test. Uh, what does this mean? When you write in uh, an unit test or unit tests, like multiple unit tests, your goal is all of them to be independent. This means that every single unit test tests for something different. They're all independent and they can even run in parallel because they're independent from each other. Uh, imagine that you're creating an ERC20 token and you want to mint an initial supply. If you have uh, if you don't have fixtures, instead of for each hook, you're gonna deploy the smart contract, mint initial supply before every single test, which uh, which is slow. With fixtures, you can deploy everything inside of this this function, which you're gonna code, and then just load fixtures inside those it statement inside every single unit test. Okay. So deploy simple storage fixture. Uh, I can uh, get some signers. So this, these are like default from hardhead. So uh, if I don't specify who is calling the, the function, this means that the first one 
is 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 the sender by default. So I can have owner and other account. Let's quickly uh, deploy uh, our simple storage contract local inside our test. So I can some, type something like that, something like this. Sorry, simple storage factory await uh, eaters get contract factory and i can choose between lock and simple storage okay simple storage why because we deleted lock but haven't compiled uh, our contracts one more time so if i do hard head compile one more time uh then you know lock will be gone away okay so now our simple storage is gonna be await simple storage factory and then deploy that's it if you have uh, some parameters inside the constructor like string memory new message and then this new message can be changing workshop then uh, your con your uh, you are gonna pass all of the constructor arguments here so if i re refactor this to be message new message then i can i need to now pass uh this message here okay uh give me a sec oh i can sorry guys i can put it here cons new message Uh, and that, that's pretty much it, okay? So I'm gonna delete this because we want to use the initial setup, but this is basically how you you'll pass, pass constructor arguments. Okay, I now need to delete this new message and deploy, that's it. Uh, again, to save this, the red, uh, the, the red error when I, I type new message or, or something like this means that we haven't recompiled our smart contract previously. So that's why it's, it's, there's an error, okay? And we want to return from this picture, simple storage, owner, another account, sorry, owner, other account. That's pretty much it. I can delete this as well. And now I can start with uh, with my tests. So I'll do something like this, switch right. I'll probably need to rename this file, sorry guys. Simple storage.spath.ts. Okay, I hope you can see this quickly. Are there any new questions? Okay. Cool. So let's start with with the test for deployment. So first thing is we want to test that uh, inside the constructor during deployment, this message was set actually. So I can type something like this, describe deployment, and then async function, which needs to be async, and then inside it. So if you have it, this means that your uh, Logic for test for the unit test goes here. So it should set message to what we say chain link workshop. Yeah, chain link workshop. So I can type async function and then open the curly brackets. I hope you can see this. Or should I? Okay, I think. Uh, it's it's okay. So uh, first thing we need to load, as I said, from fixtures our smart contract, which is here. So how I can do that? I can do something like this. So I can I'm loading an object. An object has these three, uh, three other, uh, not objects, but you know this is like a type of uh, simple storage contract. This is type of signer with address, all this stuff, and I can do something like. This this await load fixtures and load fixture is uh, imported from hardhead-network-helpers. So load fixture 
and then the name of the fixture, which is deploy simple storage fixture. That's it. What I can do now is, yeah, I'm, I just want simple storage. What I can do now is I, I can actually console log my simple storage so you can see uh, my smart contract, but that's not the purpose of the test, but yeah, yeah, just for the purpose of the demo. So what I can do now is npx hardhat test. And, and this is the whole uh, smart contract represented it in TypeScript, you know, huge stuff. Okay, I'll clear this up. And yeah, very good. we don't need this. What we need is actually expected message. Expected message equals chain workshop. And now we can get the actual message. So actual message is await simple storage dot get message. Because we are not now gonna read the message using this get function, okay? And we can one more time console log the actual message and run npx hardhat test. Hardhat test. We can see now that the actual message is actually chaining workshop, which is great. So, but the purpose of the test is not to console log stuff. You need to. Uh, either write assert or accept. So you need to write some assert assertions, uh, meaning that if someone change uh, inside smart contract later, you'll notice the failed test. So how to do that? I need to, uh, from chai library, I need to import assert as well. So ex expect and assert. And I now I will type something like this, assert. So I want to assert that expected that actual message, sorry, from left to right, equals expected message, uh, expected message. The third the third uh, equal sign means equality in types as well. And if they're not equal, I'll, some, I'll, I'll write some error message, it can be message not set uh, to a proper value, okay? And now I can run npx hardhat test one more time. And we have a completed test. That's it. Wonderful. Are there any questions? Sorry, guys. Any examples? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Kabi, for explaining in the chat and doing my part. Really appreciate it. OK, I can go back. Uh, to our Visual Studio Code. What we can do now is that we can, I can close this up, we can close this up, write uh, some new functionality. So function uh, set message, okay? And it should be a string memory new message. And it can be public because now everyone can call it. And what we want to do here is to set message to new message, okay? Uh, we can expand this functionality a bit. So we can em emit event. So events are really common in, uh, in Solidity because uh, they can be queried via logs, which is much cheaper than to query the blockchain itself. So we can specify event uh, message changed. Type string new message. Uh, and also we can emit this message changed, new message. But we also want to prevent empty strings. So to prevent empty string strings, we need to check is this new message is not an empty string. So we can do this by typing require. And we are requiring something to be true. And then we have an error message. Uh, let's say uh, empty strings not allowed. So to check if the string is empty in Solidity, you're doing this by casting to bytes, new message, then check for length. Uh, and if length is greater than zero, this means that this uh, string is not empty. 
So what you saw here is basically check effects interaction pattern, which is really common in Solidity. And basically in Solidity, you first want to check all of the inputs, validate all of the inputs, then do some effects inside your smart contract. So this is an example of effect. I'm setting a new value to my storage variable. Then interaction will be if I'm now will call another smart contract or call maybe from Chainlink Oracle or some send some native coins or tokens, whatever. And then at the end, I will I want to emit an event. So your smart contract function is very value is well written if you have only one event to emit because it's not too complex. So you can, if it is, try to split it up in a multiple internal functions that you can call from this, uh, this public one, okay? So what we did here is that uh, we follow the check effects interaction pattern, and now we want to add, to write tests for all of these situ situations, okay? What I can do actually is that I can also set the owner. Let's do that as well. So address, public, owner. So address is a primitive data type. Public means that Solidity will generate owner getter function for us. So we don't need to code this get message function, we'll have this owner with the brackets function automatically generated by Solidity because the variable is public. That's how Solidity works. And let's set up owner here. So owner is message.sender. Message.sender is uh, the wallet which call uh, called this function, okay? So this is message.sender. Uh, wallet uh, is like a, uh, is like a term we used, but the correct one is AOA. Externally owned account, okay? And we can specify modifier. So modifier means that uh, it's it it's gonna check for some uh, uh, for some condition to do every single function that is attached. So well, let's do an example. So modifier can be only owner. This means that uh, require that message.sender equals owner, otherwise revert with caller is not an owner, okay? Sorry, I have the equals and uh, extra, and that's it. So if I type only owner here, uh, it's, it's gonna also uh, validate for this input and this input, for, so we're gonna have two require if I put only owner here, that means that we cannot uh, we cannot get this message from our AOS. So only owner can get it, but that's kind of not the point. So I'm gonna delete it as well. Okay, so one more time back inside the tests. Okay, so now we want to test this set message function, but uh, before the actual testing, we need to create a test strategy. So how you, you're you gonna create the test strategy? I'm gonna hide this a bit. So I'm gonna do something like this. So you need to create a describe block. I'll type it manually so you can follow along. Described, title. Title will be the name of the function, set message, and also async function and open the describe uh, block. So our testing strategy can be what's happened on the failure and what's going to happen uh, on the success. So like a binary tree. So describe on failure, we'll see 
and also on success as well. Describe on success, async function, and that's it. Okay, so let's start with our testing strategy now. So on failure, it first should revert if caller caller is not an owner, right? Because we have this, because we have this only owner modifier. So one oh sorry. Async function. And we'll stop for now. Then Tiny screen, sorry. Then we have this required statement. So it should fail if we provide an empty string, right? So one more time. It should revert if empty string is pro provided async function. And yeah, that's it. So we have only two conditions for failure. Now let's go to the success. So this function on success, uh, it should update uh, the message variable, right? Because that's our effect. And also it should emit message changed event async function that's it because we made some changes to the smart contract uh, we need to recompile it one more time so i'll type npx car hat compile that's it let me quickly check for for questions uh... Do you have to specify the types because we are using TypeScript? Yes, uh, you need to specify the types. If you're typing constant values, uh, TypeScript should be smart enough to figure it out whether it's like number or string or whatever, but for the custom types, uh, like our smart contract is, we need to specify the type and uh, we can do it using type chain. I'll show you quickly how to do that. So um, inside my picture, let me clean this up a bit sorry guys so i can type that simple storage is type of simple storage and yeah that's it so i i i grab it grabbed it from type chain and now when i type let's say where is my deployment uh simple storage something you should be able to see yeah get message or set message or whatever Okay. Uh, more about the script. Oh, uh, describe is basically a scope. Uh, so when we let me show you this. Where's our previously? Let, let me try npx hard hat test. I hope I haven't broke something. Yeah. So you can see here we have like. Describe block for simple storage unit test, but then we'll have describe block for another contract. Then describe block for deployment. So inside this describe block, we have isolated environment for our uh, our tests, and as well for set message, we have isolated environment using describe for for failure uh, unit test and also for success unit test. So this is just just to isolate your test to be more module mod, more modular and cleaner to read. Also, you can use context. So context is uh, similar to describe, but it has like some general um, general message like Alice is now getting um, random value from VRF and what's gonna happen, et cetera, et cetera. I hope I answered your question. Um, no, or not yet, I'll say. There are no solidity built in string functions, so we need to cast it to bytes, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, described is used to define the scenarios of your unit test. Fantastic. In one sentence, really great. 
Uh, do you need to put async? Yes, uh, because we are gonna use the wait to get some some callbacks from our smart contract. So yes, contract. transactions are yes, async yes. Uh, GM. <laughs> okay, let's start with the tests. With tests, sorry. Uh, okay, we are yeah. Let's start with the first one. So. Uh, should revert if a caller is not an owner. So our owner should be this account and other account is just Alice, okay? Okay, so this should revert if Alice is calling the contract. So first we need to load the fixtures. So one more time, await, load fixture, deploy simples, storage, yeah, fixture, that's it. So now we need uh, simple storage and Alice, okay? So if I type await, simple storage, connect means that Alice is calling the function now, actual function, set message, and const new message, can be now hardhead workshop. Okay. I can put new message here. This should revert. And if I run my test, npx hardhead test, there should be giant error. Wow, what happened? Red. Basically, it said that VM exception uh, while processing transaction reverted with this string. Caller is not an owner, which we have expected like, right? So if I move this here, so caller is not an owner because of the only owner modifier here. So we just need to write uh, an accept, uh, exception sentence, let's say. So how to do that? So I need to call, I need to use expect now. So we're expecting, expect once again, uh, imported from chai, like a cert as well. So we, we are expecting simple storage called by Alice uh, to revert, to be reverted with, and the name of the actual error, which I can copy from here as well. Save, let's our, right, run our test one more time. That's it. Uh, this is our, first test and it succeeds. So then another, we sh it should revert if empty string is provided. Let's speed us up a bit because we are kind of late to time. So what I need here is now cons, simple storage. I need owner now and await load fixture, deploy simple storage fixture and that's it. Const new message is gonna be an empty, empty string and we are expecting uh, simple storage, connect owner, call by owner, set message to new message to be reverted with, uh, was the actual empty strings not allowed? Oh, sorry. Okay, I need to, yeah, sorry guys. It's hard when everything is so zoomed in with this error message and that's it. We're now gonna just run it one more time. We can see uh, that everything is, is okay so far. Now let's go to the success branch. So we need to load simple storage. We need owner one more time. Await, load fixture, deploy fixture simple storage. What we want here is to uh, type something like this. So new message, uh, we said this hardhead workshop. Then we are gonna call the function, await simple storage, connect by owner, set message to new message. And then we want to check the actual message. So we are gonna type something like this, const 
actual message await simple storage get message and we can use now assert that actual message equal new message otherwise message not set okay if i type npx hardhat test this should work and it is quickly check on time oh, we have only 10 minutes left okay and the last test will be to test for emitted event so how to do that one more time load from fixture simple storage owner now wait load fixture deploy simple storage fixture and then we are trying we're writing something like this so await expect again simple storage connected connect not so I mean called by owner set message let's say uh, uh, head. meet an event from these contracts first we need to type con contract is simple storage and changed and save this run tests everything's working fine what you can do here is if we go to our smart contract we can see that this uh, event actually has some parameters which is new message so what i can do here is that i can type to emit this event dot with arguments and the name of the argument uh also the the argument is going to be a new message so let's make this a bit cleaner so const new message so don't repeat uh hard head workshop one more time so here and new message new message okay test that's it why i did this because i can also just type like this this is the same uh the same thing but uh, if we put it in in the variable code is much cleaner than to have this string two times written okay uh okay let's go to the stream yard hi hi from indonesia yeah thank you thank you guys from yeah i can put this in multiple lines yeah sorry so expect can i format this with prettier actually i think prettier does that uh format document with let's say prettier no <laughs> sorry okay so expect i can do something like this then connect then set message then bracket so to emit let's do it like this maybe it's cleaner i'm not sure simple storage like this and then with arguments like this okay can you see it now i hope i i did it correct um but yeah maybe like this <laughs> cool so those were tests finally we should be able to write a deployment script so uh, inside the hardhead config you're gonna specify networks and then inside network you can have hardhead which is like the default one so i don't need anything but you can specify gorley so for gorley you need to have uh, um, url so url is gonna be i need missing comma here so your json rpc url so you can grab uh, we don't need this so you can grab this either from alchemy infura morales anchor etc etc or you can run your own node so you're gonna specify your json rpc url here and then accounts i think is the name or let me quickly check about the syntax sorry uh 
if I go to forehead config file, accounts, yeah, it, it's accounts. So we can type something like this. Uh, simple storage, no, this one. So you can type something like this. So accounts, yeah, I need here. So private key, you can put it inside the process that env your private key okay so basically your private key will go here okay uh yep okay so really important thing don't ever 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 expose your private keys or either here or on, on GitHub or whatever, please don't ever expose your private keys. That's why you need to put it inside the N ENV file, okay? So I'm gonna comment this for example, because for a second, because we're gonna deploy to the hard hat. So inside the scripts, we, we have the deployment script. So the deployment script is gonna be pretty much the same as in our tests. So I just need to, let's quickly do something like this. Uh, okay, so our const can be simple storage factory. One more time, eaters get contract factory, simple storage, and then storage equals await deploy. And we can just wait for simple storage to be deployed. And then we can type something like this simple storage deployed um, to simple storage that address and I can now type npx hard hat run uh, scripts is my folder then deploy.ts so I'm running inside the scripts folder the deploy ts okay and network Hard hats, okay. And that's it. Simple storage is deployed to this network. What I can do actually better is to do something like this npx hard hat node to spin up my own hard hat node, which is similar to Ganesh in Truffle, if you use Truffle, and then I'll redeploy my smart contract one more time. And then I should be able to use it because my local node is active now. Okay, let's quickly check for some questions, if any, of course. Uh, no worries. Uh, wrap lines. Yes, this is actually really true. So tests are the most important part of working blockchain. There are several tests, unit tests, uh, Integrational tests, end to end tests, negative tests, smoke tests, a, a lot, a lot. Basically, uh, I spend usually 80% of my time on writing tests and only 20% of my time on the actual smart contract development. So they're really important. Uh, why we use a weight? Uh, because um, transactions are asynchronously. So for transaction to happen, it's not gonna happen instantly. So you need to wait for something, you know, so you need to wait to be deployed. So inside the hard hat is faster, but imagine that you're trying to deploy to the worldly testnet. You need to wait for your transaction to be included in the block and then block to be included in the blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why we're using a wait inside the JavaScript for these async, uh, async actions. Cool, uh, that will be it. I have one more thing to show you guys. Uh, actually, two things. Uh, first, if you're into testing, there's a repo I created for, for you with some advanced testing techniques. So today we only wrote unit tests, but you can actually write other tests as well. So this repo is like a boilerplate uh, code for you to use if you want to add some to, to use some more advanced testing techniques in hardhead 
if you like this repo, you can maybe ping me on Twitter so I can maintain it regularly to add even more and more examples like formal verification, static analysis, all that stuff. But if not, like this is really cool for you to check it out. And one more thing that I wanted to show you is our hard starter kit. So let me quickly present that screen. Chrome tab. Oh yeah, here it is. Uh, give me a sec. You should be able to see uh, to see Harke starter kit. So basically, this is a boilerplate code for testing the plug machine chain exclusive code using Harke. So uh, you know you see there's a bunch of more code than we, than than we've written, of course. But what you can do here is there is like a really handy readme file. So you know just uh, just read carefully, and you should be able to go. So so this is how you basically use the Harke Star Kit. So you're gonna git clone it, cd to Harke Star Kit, and then just install everything. Again, if you're using uh, NPM 7 and later, you're good to go. If you're using older version, then install all of this stuff. I mentioned that at the beginning. Also, if you're using Yarn, install all of that stuff. And that's it. Then you can compile, test, deploy everything. There's also, this is a JavaScript branch because we've written everything in TypeScript. There's also TypeScript branch. So if you git check out the TypeScript, then you will have the ability to see the code inside the TypeScript, which is just a different branch on the repo. So this is the, the TypeScript version of this Harkhead training star, Harkhead starter kit. So if I go back to the original version, which is the JavaScript one, you can see contracts. So there's like a bunch of contracts for API consumer, automation counter, price fit consumer, random number, also some um, some advanced tests like unit tests, staging tests as well. So if you go to unit test, actually, you can see here how we're written um, in more advanced ways. So if we go request random numbers, yeah. So we are wait actually waiting for an event to happen, and then like we're doing some other stuff with also mock contracts. So that's maybe something for you important to to see. And also there is like, uh, there is like uh, really handy tasks like um, read automation counter, read price feed, about consumers to request random numbers, to read random numbers, to deploy it and all of those stuff. So I hope, I hope uh, this was interesting to you. Uh, let's quickly, because we're three minutes actually behind the schedule, sorry about that. Uh, let's quickly uh, see one more time. Yeah, what's reentrancy guard? I think someone already explained to you that basically reentrancy uh, is a really common hack in Solidity. So with re this reentrancy guard, you imp import that contract and then just add non reentrant modifier, uh, which means that you're safe for safe from reentrancy. Basically, that's it. But I can I can talk uh, talk more about that of course uh, on twitter so maybe ping me on twitter and i can explain everything uh yes 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 yeah okay cool uh thank you for thank you to all of us to all of you sorry thank you to all of you who who watched this uh who watched this workshop i hope uh it was um useful for you also thanks for the guys who who helped in the comment sections with uh, answers uh, once again, you can, yeah, I forgot to paste the Harke Starter Kit uh, link. So here's in the chat. So you can check the Harke Starter Kit. It's basically the best way for you to start uh, with the development of chaining products with the Starter Kit. And that will be it. See you guys.